infection from coronavirus than from seasonal flu. And we don't set, shut down our society every year for seasonal flu. So those folks can go back to school, can go back to work, can, can reboot the economy. We're not going back to work. We are going to now be able to okay. essentially concentrate our protective resources to that smaller segment of the population most prone to severe infection. So we do an even I think it's a big job. gamble to bring would try to minimize that. The issue is that the size of the pain that we're feeling from the virus now is growing exponentially. The purpose of social distancing is to uh, to slow the spread and ideally uh, turn over the, the curve of the epidemic. Cute. Are you cute? You happy to be outside on a beautiful day? Gorgeous. Welcome to my channel about creating and using hand spun yarn. My name is Lisa and I am coming to you from the suburbs of Chicago where we are on a lockdown stay at home order for, for some weeks I think to come. <clears throat> I've had a lot of people reach out to me wondering if I was going to put out a little podcast and I've been uh, working on getting my nerve up and all my things ready to do that so I'm going to try this today. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about my knitting and my spinning projects and uh, talk about my hand spun stash and um, I wanted to know if you were interested in a tour of some of my hand spun. I have quite a bit of hand spun, mostly in Aran weight to chunky weight and I'm thinking that I should finally start using it, uh, possibly putting it into some larger project. So. Um, if you're interested in a tour of my hand spun, please uh, make a comment below and uh, I will put together a little video giving you a tour. I have quite a bit, so I hope you guys are well as well as can be expected. And, uh, and if you're working outside of the home right now, I, I give you every, uh, I admire you so much. Uh, I'm, I'm doing my part by, <laughs> by sticking around at home, which isn't really a hardship for me. Um, I have long extended pe periods of time off in the summer. I'm a school teacher where I am... I engage in a lot of fleece washing and spinning and knitting and you know working outside and it's it's not a hardship for me I I don't need a lot of social interactions with people I have a pretty busy career during the school year and I appreciate the quiet but uh, but this is very very strange and and scary it's a scary time for a lot of us I I'd be lying if I didn't say that I didn't have um, anxiety and fears about what's going on but you know, you just have to have faith and, and keep as healthy as possible. I hope you're doing the same. And I hope to put some more videos out since I am, uh, I have some time on my hands just to chit chat, just to maybe sit and knit or knit and spin. I uh, have a little chat with spinning or knitting. And I really enjoy watching other people spin and knit and just talk about what they're doing. So I'm working on that as well. All right, so today I'm gonna to talk about my whips uh, I've got one finished object to show you. I'm going to talk about my um, in-progress spinning and then a couple of the finished spins that I have. All right, so I'm going to talk about finished objects first. The first thing I finished was this cowl. 
it obviously needs blocking and the, the ends trimmed off. This is uh, Across the Heath. And it was a little free pamphlet I got at my local yarn shop when I purchased the yarn. The yarn is Malabrigo, machine washable, kettle dyed, Mecha, Mecha, right here. I had just finished one of these for my sister, it was her birthday, and her adult daughter who lives with her um, asked me if I would I'll make her one too, and it is her birthday today, so I finished this for Angie. Okay, so here's the yarn. Isn't it pretty? It didn't pull at all. I'll try it on for you. It's not my colors, but I think that she's gonna really like it. So I don't know if I, of course I can't visit with her right now, so I'm gonna to have to send it to her maybe in the mail. But it's basically just uh, traveling knits and pearls around. Uh, you cast on, I think I cast on 71 stitches. Uh, cast on 71 stitches and then just knit eight, purl eight, all the way around, so your uh, the, the stitches travel as you go around the, the pattern. So that's uh, one finished object that I can show you. I've made a couple other things recently, but I don't have them anymore as I've given them as gifts. So I made a little blanket for a, a woman at work who's having a baby. <clears throat> and then I made that call for my sister. Uh, what am I working on here? Um, I'm knitting on a couple of things. First thing is this Felix Cardigan by Amy Christoffers, I think is how you pronounce her name. And of course I'm in the middle of a row here. Um, so this is a um, very popular pattern. It's the cardigan version. There's a pullover and then there's a cardigan version. Here it is, there's the pattern. And I blame Stephanie from Crafty Garden. Uh, she inspired me to make uh, to cast this on. I ordered some yarn from. The yarn I'm using is Mountain Mohair by Green Mountain Spinnery. And this is the colorway Alpen Glow. And I think it's the color that Amy uses in her pattern. Um, it's a 30% yearling mohair and 70% wool. And um, it really makes a beautiful fabric. Let me show you what it, the fabric looks like. You can see that's a true representation of this beautiful purple color, but it also has the shades of white and blue and you know, I think it's dyed in the wool and then spun. So it's just really, really beautiful yarn. Uh, what can I say about this? I am knitting the second size. I'm knitting it as per pattern. It is a back and forth cardigan with a lace detail around the um, the sleeves. If you if you um, search Felix sweater or Felix cardigan on Instagram, you'll see all kinds of beautiful examples of this. And I did try it on yesterday. And it is going to fit me, I think, quite nicely. So I was a little worried. I didn't want to make it too big, but you know, I didn't want to make it obviously too small either. So let me show you what how far I've gotten so far. Okay. Isn't it pretty? So it's got this, it's got this pretty lace detail here. I put the sleeves on these Knitter's Pride cables. They come with these stoppers which are working out really great. So I, it's, she says to knit 10 inches from the before the ribbing. I think I'm going to go a little bit longer, but not too long. I think I do want it to be more of the crop style that that is is in the pattern. So yeah, so here's the yarn. I hand, hand wound it. It's just really pretty. I could see myself knitting again with this yarn. It's 
I'm, all, I'm already thinking of a second one. You know, maybe in a red. It's really, really pretty. I have been very fortunate that I have a lot of yarn and a lot of stash. So even if I have, uh, you know, on self on isolation, uh, stay at home for a while, I'll be busy. So the Felix cardigan. I finished the cowl. Uh, the other thing I'm working on is a shawl. And this one is a pattern by Isabel Kramer. And here it is. It's got these bobbles, which are so fun. So fun to make. This one is called the Violetta shawl, the asymmetrical shawl. It was written for an alpaca yarn. And I am using deep, deep stash. This is, it's called Angel Kiss. And it's this beautiful, soft, pink coral shade, I think. It does not have a color, oh, it's called Rose, appropriately. It's so pretty. I bought this up in a little yarn shop in Eagle River, Wisconsin, probably five or six years ago. And it's been in my stash. It's a worsted weight yarn. It's pretty, it's got a beautiful halo. I'm going to try not to lose any of the stitches here. But it's getting really big. It's, uh, it's got a really nice detail. It has this, it has this I-cord edge. Is that the side with I-cord edge? Yeah. It's got this I-cord edge, which I think looks just really nifty, really nice and neat. It does shed a little bit, but I think, especially when I'm knitting, I, when wearing black, <laughs> when I wear black, it really, it sheds a little bit. But I think once it gets blocked and washed, but it's pretty. Uh, the bobbles took a little bit of work, but they're they're so fun. The tactile nature of these bobbles just just a, really a lot of fun. So yeah, that's the Violetta shawl, asymmetric shawl. I think I'm knitting it on the. Let's see. I think she recommends. Oh, a size four needle, but I'm going. I went larger. I think this is a seven. Uh, these needles here. Actually, these needles are Holtz and Cra uh, Holtz and Stein needles. They're like a rosewood or something. I think they're size seven. Let me see. Look what I got from. I got this from uh, Patricia. Some time ago, I sent her um, a little order. It's a gauge. Let me see what size this is. Yeah, it's seven, so yeah. <laughs> All right, spinning. So I am spinning three different shades of wool here from Psalm 23 Farm. That is pretty. These are from Laura Matthews Berry. She lives in Wisconsin. She's a shepherd. I had met Laura at a Wisconsin Sheep and Wool, uh, gosh, a long time ago, and I have purchased some fleeces from her. And uh, I bought, the, she sells these eight ounce bumps of fiber for re very reasonably priced, about $20 for eight ounces, which is really, really a good price, especially for these colors. This is called Lilac Ice. This is called Mango Passion. And this one's called Magic Carpet. This is the one that I dug out of my stash. And despite it being in my stash, it's spinning up pretty nicely. So I started spinning it on a support spindle that I just bought. And I'll show you what this looks like here. This is beautiful. Here's the bowl. This is the surface that you use. Uh, this is from Bjorn Peck in Sweden. It's made out of Maser birch. And it is stunning. Um, I had contacted Bjorn, gosh, many months ago, because I saw Josephine Waltine um, talk about 
these spindles on one of her little podcasts. She's a she's a spinning teacher. And I contacted him and I never heard from him. Like I think I contacted him in like in November of 2019 and then he just got back to me and he said, "You know, I I just got my web store up and go and running. And if you're interested in purchasing, you may purchase." So it's just so pretty. We got the frame here. It's beautiful workmanship. It uh, spins beautifully. So I'm spinning this magic carpet colors here. actually uh, applied all of these and I created this little mini skein here so this was from my support spindles I just did a plying ball basically you just plow wind the two cops onto a single ball and then just I, I applied this on uh, one of my drop spindles but I think I'm going to spin more of this for a project. And then this one's the other one. Now this I did on my Lendrum folding wheel.
so I've got these two colors, which I think are really, they're complementary, the blue and the orange. And then I've been playing around with this purpley lilac color on these two spindles. Right here. And I think I'll make, I'm going to finish spinning these two and make a little sample. But then I think I am going to go back to my wheel because I just don't, I want to get some yardage pretty quickly. So here the, here's the sample for that for that purple. It's got a little bit of glitz in it. And then this is the blue. And this is the orange. So I'm thinking of a simple asymmetrical shawl. I found a free pattern on, on Ravelry. It's called Winter's Dream or something. I'll post a link down below if you're interested. Um, it's just basically a garter and some eyelet rows. And I might just kind of fade in the colors back and forth. And so that's kind of what I've got on the agenda for those three colors. I was thinking I could um, get a more one a neutral shade. I think I've got some of her fiber in my stash that's just naturally colored. I think I've got white, maybe gray. And I was thinking of incorporating these three because they're pretty, they're pretty bright colors, strong colors. I thought maybe just to set it off, maybe with a neutral might be nice. Aren't they? <laughs> They're so beautiful. Joy. This stuff gives me so much joy and so much comfort. And I'm so grateful that I have this to just to, to be inspired and to, to think about. What have you been up to lately? Have you been crafting? I know I'm seeing a lot of people... Um, post videos on Insta uh, Instagram and YouTube. I think people have time and they're just trying to reach out. Maybe they're feeling a little lonesome, and which I totally understand, um, you know, kind of being stuck in the house and you're not supposed to socialize or anything. So, so that's it. What else have I been working on? So usually when I start school in the fall, I kind of put everything uh, to the side, you know, all my spinning, my knitting, my fleece washing and everything. For some reason, just work sort of consumes me. And then come spring and summer, I start to get more active. So I found a couple, I had four bobbins that still needed to be plied with some of my CVMs uh, spin. Let me go get it real quick. I don't think I showed this last year. I think I... This is some CVM that I spun last year from a raw fleece. I have four of these very, very large skeins. And I would say the sport weight, probably. Yeah. Fingering to sport weight for sure. So this is what I what I spun. This is CVM as well the gray fleece I bought at the end of the summer last year it was really really dirty it was not coated so it was quite dirty and you can see even in the the bats you've got lots of veg matter and dust I even combed it before I threw it in my carter and also when I when I plied it there was a lot of dust and dirt that came out of the that were sit, was sitting on my knitty knotty but, and my uh, Lazy Kate, but after I washed it, it just washed up beautiful. Isn't that pretty? So yeah, well worth it, but I have to say it's a very, very dirty fleece, very dirty and dusty, so I'm probably not going to be prepping that in the house uh, anytime soon. I mean, you can see even here all the dust and stuff. So I had two other um, bobbins that I had to put. This one is another CVM. Here's some of the washed locks. So pretty. So beautiful. This is very, very fine. Very, very soft. And I applied this. This is, I would say, more fingering weight. Isn't that pretty? Really beautiful. I did two different skeins. Let's 
Well, let me show you. I have quite a bit of CVM now. So I have these. I have four, four of the brown. It's a very, very dark, dark brown. I'll show you what the wash locks look like there. Oh my goodness. I know I'm talking a little quietly. My 17-year-old uh, son's upstairs sleeping and I don't want to wake him up. Um, here's your, here's the lock there. Very strong. So I have these. What do you think, you guys? I have the brown, the gray, and the white. And then I have this too. I've got more of this fleece. This is also CVM, which is a brown, like a taupey brown. So I'm thinking a colorwork sweater where this would be the body. And then these would be the contrast colors at the top. Yeah, maybe a St Jennifer Steingast pattern. I just worried about gauge, but you know, who cares, right? Uh, the other thing I was thinking I could do is make a blanket, but I have a lot of shawls and blankets, and I think a sweater would be really nice. So yeah, so that's all I wanted to talk about today, just to give you an update on what I've been working on. Um, just been doing some spindle spinning. Uh, I'm pulling out my Turkish spindles again. Here's another, here's another, um, I, <laughs> I'm so, so professional. Here's another one. This is from Enid Ashcroft. Uh, would you guys be interested in a tour of my support spindles? Because uh, embarrassingly, I have more than I thought I did. <laughs> so I, I laid them all out the other day. And then I found like another one in another room. And I don't even support spindle that much, but I'm getting more, um, more proficient at it. But are you interested in that? Because I know I did a video on Turkish spindles and people really seem to enjoy that, just the different makers. Now, I'm not a very good, I'm like, I'm not an expert. I'm not a, you know, I would recommend Josephine uh, Valtine uh, if you're interested in knowing more about support spindles. I think she has an online course that she can reference. I'm just having some fun and some practice. But if that's something you'd be interested in, I could do a little video on that and show all my support spindles. Uh, the other idea I had was going through some of my hand spun stash. I have some beautiful, a lot of naturally colored hand spun stash, and uh, I got some crazy art yarn too, and I thought maybe it would be fun to kind of just do a tour of that and maybe just uh, elicit some ideas uh, from you guys. If that's something you're interested in, um, yeah, please comment below, let me know. And then I'd also just love to hear what you're working on and how you're coping with the uh, corona uh, virus uh, pandemic, um, the shutdown. I I'm doing my part by staying at home. It's uh, I feel very fortunate I'm able to do that. My husband does work at a hospital, but he doesn't work um, directly with patients. He's more on the admin side, but still I do worry about him and all of the people that are working at the hospital um, with him. And I, I, I'm so grateful for everybody that's keeping things going from the grocery stores to the banks to the postal service. Um, very, very grateful. and. Uh, and I'm hoping that you know we come out of this on the other side with some lessons learned and you know some thankfulness and um, you know maybe there'll be something something good that can come out of this. Um, it's just very concerning about people who are sick, who aren't able to be with their loved ones. It's it's just a, it's a very sad and anxious time right now. So I think that just engaging in creative activities and. Also, you know, getting fresh air and exercise and just trying to stay well um, and just, you know, do your part. You're saving lives by staying home and realize that we're all, we all have our role to play. So I think that's about it. I think I'm on 26 minutes with editing. I think I can get this down to about 20. I hope you're well. I hope you enjoyed this podcast and uh, I look forward to talking to you very soon. Take care. See you soon.